Before you can begin training at your own regional airline, you have to complete what's known as the Airline Transport Pilot Certification Training Program, or an ATP-CTP course. The training has only existed for a few years, so in this video I'll explain why we have to take it and what you can expect from your own training. I'm headed down to Dallas now to get started. Most regional airlines will either host an ATP-CTP training program or send you to an approved training academy. Before my training begins at Envoy, I was sent here to ATP Jets in Dallas to complete the course. As you'll find out, the ATP-CTP course is actually not designed to help you pass the FA written exam, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. On July 10, 2013, the FAA posted a notice that all first officers flying for Part 121 airlines carrying passengers and cargo around the country would now be required to hold an airline transport pilot certificate. That's the FAA's highest pilot certificate. One part of this decision was the implementation of the ATP-CTP training course. The course is designed to help bridge the knowledge and experience gap between pilots who just hold a commercial pilot certificate and those who are about to begin flying for an air carrier. My week-long course is divided up into two groups, four days of classroom instruction and three days of simulator training. The FAA requires that we complete 30 hours of classroom instruction in meteorology, air carrier operations, aerodynamics, leadership, safety, and crew resource management. At the end of the week, I'll take my FAA ATP written exam. None of the topics in this course are designed to help you directly pass the exam, and it's not an FAA requirement to have this course help you prepare for the exam at all. Their goal was to help build your confidence and experience in other areas before you get your ATP certificate. So what I did before the course was I studied the questions and topics so that I was ready to take the exam essentially when I arrived on day one, so that I wasn't having to fit cramming and studying into my schedule around class before the exam at the end of the week. The FAA also requires that we complete 10 hours of simulator training. Four hours may be in an FTD, but the remaining six hours must be in a full motion flight simulator. The four hours that I'm flying in my FTD will be in a CRJ200, and the remaining six hours will be in a full motion Airbus A320 simulator. Now, I'm not flying either of those aircraft at Envoy, so I'm not actually required to learn the specific limitations, checklists, or procedures for that aircraft. Instead of aircraft specific training, our simulator lessons are based around handling general airline procedures for things like airport hotspots, runway incursions, rejected takeoffs, V2 climbs, taxiing in low visibility, landing in icing conditions, landing transport category aircraft with a crosswind, high altitude operations, and finally stall and upset recovery training. For many pilots in the ATP CTP program, this is the first time that they've ever been in a full motion simulator, and it's a great way to prepare for actual airline training, which will come later. Oh. 
up. Terrain, terrain. Pull up. Terrain, terrain. Well, that's really it. That's what you need to know before you come to ATP CTP for the first time. The course is designed to help bridge the gap between your commercial pilot certificate and flying for an air carrier for the first time. Regardless of which airline you're headed to, ATP CTP is a requirement for all of us and is one really great way to learn airline procedures and operations for the first time.